Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Thartuk-73. Last time on the Bard's podcast, Tyra, the mine employee, enlightened the group on a story from her past that related to the tomb that they had discovered. The party was taken aback at the woman's account and initially disavowed any association with the valuables contained therein. Tyra pointed out that the treasure within the tomb was blood money and it was high time that it was used for something positive. With her blessing, the group began to work on the reclamation of the treasure. We rejoin them the following day as they make one final sweep through the chamber to make sure nothing was overlooked. Cabe Silvertongue shook his head and pointed out that he had found nothing. The same was true for Bolger, the sailor, and Sister Elaine, the cleric. I think we've pilfered it all, said the cleric, as she headed towards the ladder that led up to the mine tunnel above. Allowing the other two men to go ahead of her, she scaled the elevation before dropping her torch back onto the stone floor below. The trio made their way through the rough timbers that had been piled next to the support beams in the mine and finally reached the fresh air outside. Fargus observed their approach and questioned them and was happy with the answer. I still don't know why they want to destroy the mine, pondered Bolger. What good does it do? Lady Irena approached and she and the bard explained that open mine shafts were an invitation for humanoid collection. By destroying the entrance, anyone who wants to use it as a warrant will have to do the work on their own, quipped the mage. Geldor approached and asked the members if they were satisfied. After getting the answer he liked, he called for Tyra and Karina. The pair approached with lit torches and the mine owner waved his hand towards the opening. The ladies approached and counted off before tossing the torches in. The flammable material went up quickly as the timbers had been soaked in oil and the pair ran quickly down the incline towards the rest of the miners. As smoke billowed out, large cracks were heard coming from inside the mountain. A few minutes later, the supports gave way and a loud crash was heard. Smoke and fire blew out of the entrance to the mine, followed by rocks and dust. Geldor's mine had dug out the area and the supports confirming that the complex would be closed in on itself. A loud cheer followed by an unusual silence came over the crowd. For many months, the group had labored inside the mountain. They were both elated and saddened that their hard work had come to an end. Finally, Geldor the gnome smacked his hands together and blurted out, Who wants to go to town? Followed by cheers and applause from his workers. Will you be joining us? He asked of the adventurers. Fargus turned to each member of the group and received a nod and confirmation. The ranger reached out and put his hand on the gnome's back and pointed out that he couldn't very well have the miner and his crew out in the wilderness without an armed escort, especially considering their newfound wealth. The miner grinned broadly and helped Tyra up onto the wagon as the party members each mounted up. Karina was still getting used to peepers as transportation, but the axe beak didn't seem to mind at all. How do you want to do this? queried later for Lady Irena to Fargus. The group circled around Fargus, who suggested two right at the head, two at the end, and two riding back and forth. Considering that the wagon train numbered 12 loaded caravan, we can take turns switching places as Geldor reported that Tunis was two-day ride at wagon speed. The first day passed uneventfully, and the caravan stopped in a small valley. The open area would allow enough advance notice in case of encroaching problems, and Geldor pointed out that it was frequently used as a campsite by travelers. Old campsites were subsequently located, confirming Geldor's opinion of being in the right location. After dinner, Fargus and Karina began to make a guard schedule and were delighted to see a few miners willing to assist. While their ability to fight was questionable, the reasonableness of having additional eyes wouldn't hurt the security. The pair of adventurers set the new recruits up to gather wood from a copse of trees to set picket fires, and then passed out the guard assignments. 
After dinner, the ranger and Waif took first watch, with four volunteers watching the perimeter. The quiet night had a soothing breeze, and the pair took turns making circles around the camp. With a small herd of deer moving in, the adventurers realized that they would act as an early warning system and relax just a bit. While making their rounds, the pair met up midway through guard posts, and Karina asked Vargas if she could ask him a question. Shocked at the strange request, he pointed out to her that she could ask him anything. Ray Day? Who is she? inquired the waif. Vargas grew quiet and didn't speak for a minute before starting to bypass the conversation but was stopped by Karina. She pointed out that she felt she deserved an answer considering what had transpired at the swollen river. The human shook his head in agreement and pointed out that she indeed deserved an explanation. Remembering to himself for a few moments, the ranger sighed deeply and began to speak. With respect, Ray Day was the most beautiful woman I have ever met. She was my first and my only flame to light my heart. I nearly became a carpenter because of her. She and I were to be married, and I was going to live out my life with her. A look of sorrow crossed his face as he became choked up over the memories. Karina was patient and stood several moments until the ranger shook off his thoughts. <sighs> Alas, it wasn't to be. She became sick after a visit to her sister in a neighboring town, and she could not recover. Clerics could do nothing, and she died in my arms, just like love did that day. I buried Ray Day under the oak tree we met, and knew, and I knew I had to leave and never return. I took my woodsman skills and hit the adventuring trail. I decided that Phoenix was the place to look for my future and... But the ranger trailed off, looking out into the sky. And what? inquired the waif. Vargas smiled and said, I found my future with my friends. All of my friends, he said. He rubbed her shoulder in a gesture of camaraderie and began to return to walking the perimeter. A big smile crossed Karina's face, and she knew for certain that she was indeed part of the group. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.